Hello and welcome to this video all about flight controller choices here in the summer of 2020. Now I did a video a while ago talking about some of the old stuff that I found at the bottom of my spares bins. I've been building quadcopters and all kinds of things with flight controllers in seven, eight, nine years now. So it's been an awful long time and it's been a fantastic journey. But some of that older technology, things like APM, CC3D, uh, I wasn't ever going to use again. So I made that video as kind of a fun thing to look back at where we'd been in the early days of the hobby and how far we'd come. But also the other reason I made it was to let newer builders and pilots know that that necessarily wasn't the best choice for a new build because lots of questions still come in on the channel around APM CC3D setup and it's trickier to set those up because you have to go and find the older firmware, sometimes the older configurators and sometimes the old versions of stuff like Open Pilot isn't about, you have to use things like Libra Pilot, it can be a lot more complicated. Modern flight controllers use the latest versions of software and firmware and can be a lot simpler and easy to set up and of course lots of people have seen that original video and said well, that's great so if they're the ones I shouldn't use which one should I use? And that's what this video is. Now there are a couple of caveats before I get into this. This is all based on my own personal experience. I am lucky I get to see lots of flight controllers and play with lots of flight controllers in here and I pinch good ideas. If I get a quadcopter in that flies really well, that's beautifully put together and I check the layout of it inside and I'm really impressed with how it's all put together, then I will just take that entire idea and build my own version of it with the same flight controller, power distribution board, whatever it is. So in a lot of cases, if I'm looking for a flight controller for a specific use and one of my favorites wouldn't fit the bill, that's where I would go to. I'd go to uh, one of the models from a vendor or manufacturer or YouTuber that I trust and go and watch what they're actually doing and watch they're using have to be a little bit careful with that. Lots of YouTube channels are affiliated with shops and have their own branded stuff. Uh, so keep that in mind when recommendations are being made because what you're looking for is stuff that's relatively straightforward and easy and also advice that's reasonably impartial. But it's very difficult to be completely impartial with this because everybody's experiences are different. For example, if I had a flight controller in and I was unlucky to get the one that had been made at the end of Friday before everyone knocked off and went home and it had a problem, then my experience with that flight controller won't be great. But it might be working perfectly for dozens and dozens of other pilots. Similarly, I might have one that's absolutely flawless and works beautifully and gives me a great experience. Other people out there might get hold of that flight controller and have exactly the opposite experience. So just because I'm going to talk about a flight controller in here doesn't mean that is the result of hours and hours of testing of thousands of flight controllers. It's all just based on my specific experience with all the building and playing that I do here. The other thing to think about is the clones. Now I talked about in that video looking at older technology, things like the SP Racing F3. Now the SP Racing F3 was probably one of the most cloned boards I've ever seen. It was the start of the F3 revolution. Again, F3 just talks about the kind of um, CPU that's on the flight controller, but then F4 and F7 are kind of the more modern versions of it. But it was cloned within five, six weeks of it being released. So the guy who designed it, a guy called Dominic Clifton, unfortunately didn't get the full benefit of all his hard work figuring all that stuff out. The problem with clones, of course, is that they are not made to the same standard in terms of quality. Uh, they potentially could even be made in the same factory. But whereas with other people who are putting their name on it, there's usually some kind of follow-up QA or checking of the flight controller before it's shipped to you as a customer. Uh, with a lot of these clones, uh, as soon as everything's soldered on, it just gets stuck in an anti-static bag and sh uh, shipped to whoever and then it, you're on your own. It used to be that you had to figure out what flight controller software you used in order to pick the flight control hardware, the flight controller, because the two kind of go together to make the system along with some usual companion application on your computer to set it all up. Now, historically, you used to have things like Pixhawk for Ardu plane and Ardu copter. You used to have things like NASI32 for things like Clean Flight and Beta Flight. You used to have different things for different technologies. These days, the 
same piece of hardware, the flight controller, can run lots and lots of different things. So in a moment when I go through my list and kind of explain what I like, you'll see a couple of the names cropping up again and again, even if I'm talking about different flight control software, because that's how I've grouped it. Again, the minimum processor I'd recommend if you're doing a new build right now would be an F4 base processor. Um, F7 or even H7 uh, is the kind of the upper level of what's available right now. The challenge with using older F3 technology is that the end of life is, uh, is kind of here for all that. iNav is kind of retiring support. Um, and what tends to happen is even before support is retired, because those older boards struggle to run the newer code, they kind of take pieces of the code away that most people don't use. So you get kind of a, you know, like a Pepsi Lite experience rather than the full fat version. That does mean that it extends the life of the board, uh, but ultimately you, you are on a clock. Using F4 will, is kind of the entry level right now, F7, if you can afford an F7 processor, is going to mean that it's probably going to be supported for two or three years before that starts to run out of headroom. Who knows where we'll go then. So I talked a little bit there about different firmwares. I talked about some called Pilot. I talked about Betaflight. I talked about iNav. Uh, let me just uh, very, very quickly go through this. Again, this is a video really aimed at newer builders. Um, if you've been around the hobby for a while, none of this is going to be news to you. First one to talk about is our friend Betaflight. Now, Betaflight is something that loads and loads of channels uh, talk about. It tends to be used in quadcopters. It's really used for racing. It's fantastic for all that stuff. It has basic GPS connectivity, uh, so it has kind of a rescue mode. It doesn't do missions. It's really aimed at quadcopters flying around at really, really high speed and providing a really locked in feel, and it is amazing for that. I now Flight, which is a very close cousin of Vita Flight uh, added a couple of additional things. So it supported fixed wings for ages. So I use it an awful lot in fixed wings. And in the recent editions, it's also starting to add support for things like cars and boats and things like that. Uh, autonomous vehicles where they just have kind of a steering and a throttle control rather than other things as well. INAV Flight lags some of the very latest innovations in Beta Flight in terms of providing that really locked in super high performance flying uh, but with a bit of work you can get it to fly very nicely on multi-rotors uh, but fixed wings it also has some really good settings in there to make sure that for a fixed wing it works beautifully basic missions are in there now that mission stuff is developing all the time it will do autonomous flight and the gps flight modes are fantastic you can have a gps um, position or nav position hold where if it's a quadcopter it'll just kind of park itself in the sky or you can have return to home or it'll fly back to you land and disarm you can set up autonomous missions load those into the flight controller and it'll kind of fly itself whether or not it's a plane or a quadcopter some really cute stuff I use iNav a lot here, uh, particularly in my wing builds that I do. I'll put a couple of links below if you want to go and have a look. Last one then is ArduPilot. Now ArduPilot is the granddaddy of these. Uh, this is probably the most tested technology that I've used here on the bench. It's made up of a family of different things. So although it's called ArduPilot is the collective name, there's ArduCopter for multi-rotors, there's ArduPlane, for planes. There's Ardu uh, Sub for submarines, believe it or not. Ardu Rover for cars and things like that. So there's a whole family of stuff. Now, the technology inside Ardu Pilot hasn't really been designed around FPV and it doesn't support all the latest protocols. So things like CRSS, Smart Audio, if you want to control your video transmitter, all that stuff kind of isn't there. And it was only about a year and a half ago that things like inbuilt on screen displays were supported because the history of Arduino Pilot is running on something called the Pixhawk that we'll talk about in a minute, uh, but it provides unbelievably smooth, resilient flying, and Arduino Pilot is what lots of people will use if they're building something that's going to be expensive or maybe have a really expensive camera slung underneath in some kind of gimbal. That's where they tend to go because of its pedigree, the amount of testing, and just how well it works for those kind of applications. 
So in terms of iNav and beta flight, let's talk about the flight controllers that I love for that. The first one is the Matek F405 and the Matek F765 wing flight controllers. Uh, they're a little bit longer than regular flight controllers, have huge battery illumination circuits on board, providing big currents to run the servos. They are amazing. They are my go-to for fixed wing builds. Uh, it's an all-in-one board. You know, you sold your battery on one side, your ESC on the other. You'll see the Matek F405 and actually the 765 in lots and lots of things on the channel. I've used other ones as well. I'll come on to that in a minute. The Matek F411 is its smaller brother. I've built with that. Um, I wasn't very impressed, uh, but I'll talk about why in a sec. The Holybro Kakute flight controllers are fab. Uh, the Holybro Kakute flight controller was actually inside one of the things I reviewed recently, the Holybro Coppice Mini, uh, along with a little companion power distribution board. Really, really great flight controllers. Since the very first Kakute came out, I have been a fan of these and uh, they just work. You just get them, all the pads are in a great place, stick everything on and they're just fantastic. So I use the Kikutes a lot for different things in multi-rotors. Another flight controller that I'm a huge fan of is the flight controllers from Brain FPV, the Radix. Now Brain FPV are a little bit unusual in they take beta flight or iNav now actually and they uh, put in the support for a vector based on screen display that's part of that flight controller. And that provides a really, really beautiful on-screen display if you're watching or flying by FPV. Um, and the, there are a couple of power distribution boards that fit underneath that can support multi-rotors or can support uh, fixed wing. So that is a really nice option. And again, it provides a really different on-screen display that just looks absolutely beautiful. And I've also used CL Racing uh, flight controllers. A lot of the Armatan stuff that I look at on the channel has CL Racing flight controllers in and they always perform really well. In fact, I did an Armatan build with a CL Racing F4S, I think it might have been. Um, and again, it just worked beautifully. The pad layouts on them are really, really nicely thought out. A couple of ones that I've built with that I probably wouldn't use. Again, that's that Matek F411. Uh, the voltage smoothing on there wasn't particularly good. I got quite a lot of interference on the FPV until I added like kind of an inline filter going to the video transmitter. Uh, that kind of stuff is all taken care of on board with the Matic F405 and F765. Uh, they're just powerhouses when it comes to supplying clean, clear voltages out to your video transmitter, your servos, your camera and everything else. The other one that I've used that I'm not sure I'd recommend really uh, for things like iNav and Betaflight is the Omnibus F4 Pro. Um, I have done builds with it. Uh, the Omnibus F4 Pro is definitely one of those things that these days it's all clone boards. So you pay your money, you take your chance. But uh, if you want a really cheap and cheerful build, you can get those for kind of below $20, 20 pounds. And with a companion GPS, so something like iNav, which will be 15, 16 pounds, you can have your complete setup for under kind of $40, 40 pounds to put iNav on. So it's relatively cheap and easy to install. Again, check all the links below for different build videos and you can kind of see how these things work in action. Last bit to talk about then is Ardu Pilots. That's that family that I've talked about. So there's Ardu Copter, Ardu Plane, Ardu Rover, Ardu Sub, etc., etc. Now, the main one that I tend to go with these days, if I'm building a model that I don't want to fly FPV, or I'm not bothered as much about FPV for, is going to be the Pixhawk Cube. The Pixhawk Cube Orange uh, with the different carrier boards. There are carrier boards that will work for multi-rotors that are better for fixed wing configurations. Um, it is the gold standard for RD Pilot at the moment. The challenge is it isn't cheap, it is expensive. But if you're flying a rig that's got a $2,000 camera slung underneath it, then you're not gonna quibble about paying an extra $100 for a flight controller that you can rely on. Uh, it has a lots of redundancy, so redundant gyros, accelerometers, compasses, even as an internal heater to maintain the, uh, the heat inside of the device so that you don't get drift of the accelerometers from the change in temperature as it all warms up. It is very, very clever, but expensive. The other one that I like that's a little bit cheaper that gives you kind of similar levels of performance um, missing a couple of features, but only a couple, is the Holybro Durandal. Looked at this a few weeks ago. The Durandal 
is a little bit cheaper it is a bit a little bit lower profile so easy to install all the connectors are the same uh, again all of the same kind of functionality that you'd expect out the cube and a really great option if i want to use um, third party boards with things like the Ardu Pilot technology, then I will go back to those Matex that we already talked about. So the F405 and the F765, both of those are supported by Ardu Pilot and again, provide a really great platform. The really nice thing about those is that Ardu Pilot does support the on-screen display technology that's inside those boards. So it's a lot easier to set up OSDs. Again, links below will show you how I've set up Ardu Plane on an F405 in an AR wing, uh, and that is one of my favorite little wings. There are a couple that I've also used. I've used and still have kicking around here a couple of the Pixhawk clones. Uh, again, they tend to be eBay specials. They come with the GPS and all those different pieces. You pay your money, you take your chance. Now, I've been lucky and touch wood, I haven't had one yet that's had any particular fault. I've put them together and it kind of worked okay. They are not the latest and greatest, but they're a really cheap and easy way if you want the Pixhawk technology in a plane. However, for me personally, if I wasn't going to go for one of the, the Pixhawk cubes or something like the Hollybro Durandal or the Pixhawk 4 from Hollybro actually is pretty, still pretty good, then I would get something like the Matek boards rather than a modern Pixhawk. And the other thing that I've used there again is those omnibus boards. I've also installed that into a little uh, 600 millimeter wing running Ardu plane. And again, that was a really fab build and works spectacularly well. And again, also supports the on-screen FPV pieces so you can have an on-screen display in the goggles too. So hopefully that's been useful for those of you that are coming into the hobby that are interested in what you should be using for a build. Again, this is all based on my own personal experience and what I've had really good experiences with and the flight controllers that I get in that just don't let me down and work beautifully every single time. Other flight controllers are available and it really depends on your budget, what you can afford. Some of the things in those lists are quite expensive. Some of them are an awful lot cheaper. I would always recommend buy the best flight controller that you can get and then that way if it's a model that you're going to be flying for three or four years you can continue to update and add the latest software get the benefits of the latest features and tweak it without running out of headroom so if you are thinking of a build good luck again do check out the links below links to some of the popular series using some of these flight controllers and some of these things like Betaflight, iNav and Ardu Plane to kind of show you how I put these things together. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.